Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode here on the Hermitcraft Amplified server. Today's episode, just really excited to record it because we are making epic progress over here. Got some stuff to show you again with the storage system, don't want to drag it on and talk about it for too long. But we did a live stream the other day and we got this thing like really up to scratch. It's almost finished, let's put it that way. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the live streams did one on a Saturday morning, which is starting to become a bit of a regular thing. As always, description box down below, uh, links to Twitch and the second channel. If ever you want to watch the live streams, follow me on Twitch. If you want to uh, watch them later on, the second channel is the place to go to. Uh, but enough about that, I really want to show you um, what, what's been done and what we're going to do this episode. We have like a, a list of things and I'm really excited to get going. So... This whole storage area, I rambled on about it for too long, so let's do this quickly. This chest right here is now hooked up to the entire storage system. So this is our input chest. If you have a look, there's actually a hopper down below. So all the items that go into here are going to get sorted. They're going to go across. You can see there's loads of furnaces on the ground because everyone tells me that furnaces above hoppers reduce lag. So that's cool. <laughs> Apparently that comes from the zip crowd, so I'd trust uh, them to know what they're talking about, of course. It goes into uh, a dropper elevator, item elevator over here. And it's going to send them into this new contraption, which if you didn't see the live stream, you're probably wondering what on earth this is. It's something that I designed uh, for this specific job that we have in mind. So we have an item filter right here. It's the same design as what we have over there. So items will get filtered into the chest down below. And then these hoppers will fill up any minecart chests that come underneath. There's going to be one on each track. And behind it, we have a comparator hooked up to some redstone that's going to send a signal backwards. So when the minecart chest has enough items in it, the redstone signal is going to reach over here. And that means that the track is going to be powered. It's going to be sent on its way to a minecart unloader, which is going to reside around these sides over here and on the opposite side as well. So just to refresh your memory, if we go over here... On the opposite side, all of those chests over there have cobblestone and they'll all be hooked up to hoppers and the minecart um, so they get automatically sorted, as will dirt, <laughs> uh, netherrack and stone over here. And there was going to be one more, but I can never remember what was going to go in that one over there. So with those being the most common of items, they're going to get filtered out first of all. And uh, and then the if we have a look up the top here, the hoppers are going to go around to this side. Once again, furnaces on top of every single one of them. And they go for our second item sorter. Now this is the one with packed ice, iron, all that sort of stuff. And you know I've been moving it from the opposite side over to this one. So once again a whole bunch of common items get filtered first. And then this thing goes into our master sorting system. Goes through all the way through all of that. We've talked about that plenty of times. And it comes out on the opposite side over here. And then it goes through all of this. Another item filter. And this one is for mob drops and things like that. So now we've got an incentive to build a mob farm. Oh yeah, because we got rotted flesh, we got string, gunpowder in here, bones, bone meal, all of that stuff gets filtered out last of all. And after this bit is done, we've just got one more job to do here, which I'm going to do in a moment, which is send the items down below and put them into the other item elevator that we have that sends them into our output chest, which is this thing right here. So to go to the front and recap, we can now put all of our items after we're done doing a project and we want them sorted away automatically and silent, the entire thing is silent, <laughs> uh, we can dump them into that first chest, they go through, they're going to come out on the other chest if there's anything that hasn't been done, as well as smelted items, all of that is hooked up. I think the last thing for us to do now is just to sort of sort these out, obviously the minecart chest system, uh, but this over here you know, will be done over time and I don't really need to talk about it too much anymore. For example, you know, I added all of this and that'll be be getting done bit by bit and it's really exciting because we're pretty much there it's pretty much done just a few more off-camera things for me to do so as well as that we have uh, one other little job that we're going to do before we move on to something else I have a very cool song to show you going to do a time lapse really looking forward to that I'll talk about that in a moment um, I have to go around and replace all of these droppers with a new light source underneath because I noticed if you look in the corner over here it's a little bit dark and that's all right however there were like one or two spots per corner where mobs could actually spawn, and literally just one or two. And uh, I also thought it looked a little bit moody as well. So what we're going to do is move the lighting out a little bit, and the arrangement that we have right here is the same as what I've done on the third floor down there. You can see the lights just there. And also I started doing it on this side over here as well. So it's probably going to be like the um, normal arrangement for each floor. Have I actually done that correctly? Because this one over here has a block in the middle, and the one down there didn't. It had, you know, it started either side of the middle. 
So apparently I did that wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, so two jobs to do. I'll show you it when it's done and then we can move on to doing this time lapse. Okay, the lighting is in place and so not too much to talk about here other than it really has removed those dark spots around the edges and this whole place just feels a lot brighter now. It was nice and bright as it was with the yellow, but yeah, that was a good change. And then around the back here, if you want to see it. By the way, this thing broke down a moment ago, and it's easy to see how now that we got the lights at the front. When I came back over here, one of the comparators um, was constantly on, and all the items were backing up in there. So I think every now and then, something causes it to just hick up a little bit, and occasionally two items can go into there, which is probably like a lag issue. So anyway, over the side here, I'll just show you it quickly. The items can come down like this. Then they go underneath and across and they rejoin this bit up the top here which means they go through that final item elevator just um, over the back there. So now we're going to head back over to the sheep farm because we've got another little bit of work to do over there. Basically the same thing we did last episode except in a time lapse on the opposite side. And I've got a really cool song to show you. It's made by Ellie Beatmaker and when you hear that name you probably know exactly what it is. It's uh, a remix of me, believe it or not. And I absolutely love this song. We've been playing it before the live streams and uh, we're going to play it now in a time lapse so sit back and enjoy this wonderful song Well, that was absolutely fantastic. It was so cool to be remixed. This place is so derpy. Yeah, Ellie Beatmaker did a terrific job with that song. Absolutely love it. We've been playing it before we live stream, and it's really great to uh, include it in a video as well, which I'm sure we'll do more often. So, Ellie, if you're watching, thank you ever so much for the remix. Absolutely love it. And all of you watching, I want you to do me a favor and head over to his video. There will, of course, be a link in the description box down below. Give it a like and uh, a comment from me saying... That song is just uh, amazing. Show him some love, basically, is what I'm saying. Uh, it's really cool to be <laughs> remixed. So, yeah, um, that was a lot of fun. And uh, let's talk about what we've done over here. So this thing is pretty much identical to the one on the other side. So not too much to talk about. If you don't know what it is, then you probably missed the last episode. So that's was it last episode or the one before that we did this now? I can't actually remember. Um, so go back and check that out. Uh, but yeah, this thing works. I give it a quick test and you can see we get some more from it, which is all good. And that's it. We're done with this project now. It's finally been upgraded. Uh, one thing we do need to do is just tidy up the chest that's left over. So I've got to put a few items uh, in my ender chest. And yeah, this project has been good. It now means that we can get plentiful amounts of wool, which is probably another thing I want to do here, actually, because I harvested a lot last time and I just sort of left them in these chests. Yeah, so I'm going to take some of these back with me. Um, as well, but that's going to be so much easier for getting lots of colours when you need it. And of course, you can still get just a single colour as well. So it's really been um, a really good project to do that. Uh, but we're done here now, so I'm going to head back over to the base. Going to do something else. I've got a list. I can't remember what's next on it, uh, but I'll meet you over there. So we are back at base, and I have something to talk to you about next on the list. It is UHC. If you didn't know. UHC 9 just happened, um, so if you don't want spoilers, then then look away or 
or don't listen, or skip ahead, something like that. <laughs> um, yeah, so UHC 9 happened, and I died, and I didn't play very well either. Now, one of the things I've talked about before in the past is that backseat gaming, i.e. watching someone and being like, oh my god, how could you not notice that you had this thing in your inventory, um, is a little bit ridiculous, and let me explain why. When you're playing, you're not seeing the game in the same way that someone who's sitting back and observing is. You know, there's a lot more pressure on you, um, there's different circumstances, and your mind is on different things, and, you know, you can't be expected to uh, <laughs> to be perfect. But that being said, I didn't have the best of games. I haven't played UHC in a long, long time, and uh, I think the last one that I played was actually a Hermitcraft UHC, and I usually play them casually, um, with some of the people from my server community as well. Um, so I was kind of rusty, didn't play very well, could have done a lot better, and I was really disappointed with the final battle that happened. So for those of you that have seen it, I felt like perhaps we could have won that, you know. Um, Slipgator and XB were doing alright, but we had those potion arrows that would have delivered three da hearts of damage beyond, uh, or was it just one and a half, but beyond any armor or uh, or, you know, protection that they had against it because it was a potion effect, which is one of the 1.9 features. Uh, what else was I going to do here once I put these items away? Oh yes, we've got items in the uh, ender chest. And I could have used the sorter, but sometimes you want to do it this way since we're chatting. <laughs> um, and yeah, so we could have done a lot better and I was being aggressive, trying to get involved in the action. I kind of knew that it wasn't going to go too well. But me and Doc got up really close to the two of them, which didn't make sense because our best strength was our bows, which we had power free, and our arrows, which had the instant damage on them. And just in hindsight, it would have been so much smarter to back away and try getting a shot on them because a couple of shots and we could have taken them out. But there you go, that's UHC. You know, it always it's easier to understand what to do after and uh, kind of like I said with backseat gaming, it's always easier to uh, to sit back and look at things that people are doing wrong uh, rather than understand that when you're in the moment. And another thing I want to mention that is was late at night as well. So um, so yeah, like I wasn't thinking the straightest either. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to put this iron in there to be sorted. Those can be sorted in there as well. Ender pearls are now in our system. So are droppers. <laughs> we'll let a few of these go around. So anyway, enough about that UHC. I want to talk about the next few UHCs, and I'd like you to all give me some feedback. We've been talking as a group, and we feel like these UHCs that drag on for you know episode after episode are uh, are not so great anymore. You know, we've seen it time and time again, and we're talking about trying to streamline it as much as possible, get to the fighting, and try and make it so that these series are going to last like three to four episodes. And we want to get some feedback on that. You know, this could involve making it very easy to get. Um, coal and, and gold and diamonds and stuff just by um, you know upping the amount that appears in the world and that way we can have you know a much faster UHC game with some twists as always there's twists in the plan um, but I wanted to let you guys know that that'll be the plan for the future when you next see a UHC it's quite likely it will be um, designed in a way that means it's only going to last three or four episodes and there's going to be a lot more action to watch um, which should be more fun to view okay here we go so something's messed up here Something's messed up over here as well. This could have been when I actually left the area, you know, because I went through the portal and then came back again, and that could possibly cause some issues. It does take a fair while to sort these items out. Let's put them back in here. Yep, they can be sorted, so can those. And I think that was kind of all of it, wasn't it? Yeah. Cool. So, anyway, if you want to leave me any feedback or thoughts about UHC, then we're always listening for ideas and, and input on how we can make um, the series better. Um, and yeah, so I've rambled on about that for long enough. So we are now in a very strange looking place. Yes, this is not the Hermitcraft server. This is uh, a temporary world that we set up on the Plot World server. And we had a little bit of a competition there because we're going to be working next on the Wither Farm again and hooking it up with its own Never Tunnel, which is long, long overdue. And I don't know what's taking me so long with these projects this season, but I just feel like doing bits and bobs all over the place. And this thing we should probably have done a long time ago, as I said. And I decided that what I wanted to do is turn it into a competition. So I kind of set up some specifications for what I was looking for in this Never Tunnel. And that includes transport and things like that um, have been sort of kept in mind. And then I designed like a segment which was I think 7 blocks across and 12 blocks along that we could repeat over and over again. And we had a live stream competition on the Plot World server a while back. So I wrote down some notes about things that would be important for this which I don't really need to go over again. Uh, but if we have a look here you can see like I put some signs down to sort of say this bit right here must be ice 
and these must be full blocks so that the rails can be there and that these must be a slab and uh, the idea is that we're going for a free wide tunnel that you can run over but you can also um, take horses down as well and I think the horse when it's overlapping with the slab on either side will always be able to get the speed of the ice if it affects the horse which I'm not 100% sure about um, which is really cool that's why it's done like that and obviously the rail is to use a minecart to travel back and forth through it. So we want to make a really nice looking never tunnel and I felt like handing this over to the community doing a kind of project together again and now I've got my work cut out for me because what I'm going to be doing is going around all of these, checking them out one by one, taking notes and picking out my favourites and showing you some of them so that we can create like the ultimate never tunnel. <laughs> It's going to be a really crazy project. So loads of people came on during the live stream. Then we left the server on for a few more days after so everyone could finish their projects. And now we've got like a ridiculous amount of tunnels. All right, all right. I don't want to ramble on for too long here. I want to make it very clear what I'm going to be doing. I will visit every single plot one by one and check out all of these tunnels. I'll be taking notes about things I like about them and maybe some of them will be candidates for the ones that we use on the actual Hermitcraft server. I'm going to be checking both the interiors and exteriors because it is a tunnel out in the open. It's not like hidden in Netherrack like this one over here. And uh, and then, yeah, I'm just going to take all my thoughts after that and hopefully come up with a design that we'll be building, you know, maybe in this episode or the next episode of Hermitcraft. But I do just want to say quickly, thank you so much to everyone who became um, a part of this and logged on when we were live streaming it's absolutely fantastic there are so many designs here I saw a lot of them um, during the live stream and uh, it's really amazing what we can do as a community and we're gonna come up with probably the best never tunnel ever so thank you to all of you and it's now time for me to go through all of these one by one so I've spent a very long time going through all of the plots and compiling them into this world right here we have a whole bunch of tunnels which I want to give a mention to for various reasons and then the ones behind me are the ones that I think are going to influence our final um, design. But first of all, we've got a couple of things here that aren't exactly tunnels. We've got a rabbit having a kip in a bed. And I also found this right here, which made me chuckle. It is a happy looking Enderman. He's got a little cane to walk with and he's got an obsidian top hat. You can also go inside this guy and uh, in here you can find that he has water in his brain. So the Enderman has water in his brain. That is not what I expected to see in there, but there you go. And uh, this first tunnel that we're going to talk about right here was made by a Spooky Winger. I'm going to say the name of everyone who's uh, contributed. I wanted to mention this tunnel just because I love the use of the bookshelves. I personally space these out a little bit further and maybe put some details in between. Uh, but really liked that bookshelves were you know, included. I don't think we're going to do that in R1, uh, but it was something that I wanted to mention. Then over here we've got one built by Kyote. And I like this one a lot and I really like the use of nether warts. I'm hoping we can get to use them. Um, they look really cool. I kind of feel like the different growth rates of them look good, but over time they'll all grow um, to the fullest one. So that was a nice little feature that I liked about this tunnel. If we drop down below, the next one that we have here is the Balam 96. What I liked about this one was the ice and the flowers behind the glass here. It looks ever so cool, but that's not quite um, what we're going for. But I did want to mention it. And also, I love the green down the bottom here, the way it just kind of sneaks in there. Um, is really cool. So the next one is made by uh, Anus922 and this one I love the use of the bushes in the ceiling like we saw in one of the previous ones and I just felt like the shapes on the sides and the flower pots everything here was good just not quite what we were looking for but I do very much like that that one right there and then this design has to be mentioned it's pretty obvious why this was made by Bajani MC and it's just a radical crazy looking design with an awesome shape and it totally deserves a mention. Also, I found this interesting that there's just cobblestone with vines over on this side. Simply you can, so you can see it through um, the gap. Which is interesting and crazy design right there. So this next one was made by uh, Djul222. And this one has wither skulls in. That is a must for in our, our like final tunnel design. And uh, the design itself is really cool as well. I also like the way it's encased by stone. That means even though there's flammables on the inside, um, they should be protected from ghasts and such on the outside. In fact, the shape and design of this one is actually really cool. I do like that. Um, so this next one right here is pretty cool. Let's check it out. It's by Steve Atheny. No, there's no N. Steve Affy. 
And uh, he's put the Wither Skulls on top of Anvils. Anvils look really great in this, and the Iron Bars as well. And I just like the uh, choice of materials here. For example, the brown clay behind the lava there. So that's one that I think is going to have a bit of an influence on our final design. And then over here we have Lord Banani. And this one is just fantastic. It looks really clean and cool. And what I liked about this was the vines hanging down from the top. I don't think we're going to use that in our tunnel design, but I thought that was really cool and would add a nice bit of detail um, so yeah, on to the next one, we have Marnix MC, and this right here, the little mini-me's, that's really fantastic. I was thinking these with Wither Skulls on um, could look really, really good. And also the use of banners, I think that's something we're going to have to do, put some banners um, throughout our tunnel as well. Then on to the next one, we have uh, Jamie Clark 123. I feel like... I feel like there's stuff melting. <laughs> there's definitely stuff melting. Yeah, this one right here... I feel it's a little bit too big for what I'm going for. However, I felt like the the theme and the size was just sort of perfect, really. Like this would make a fantastic Never Tunnel. However, for the size of project we're about to go on, um, it really would be probably too much. So very cool tunnel right there. Um, this next one, let's have a look, was made by. Uh, can we find a sign with his name on? <laughs> it's Mr. Polymath and. This one is not really the sort of theme that we're going for. There's also a lot of quartz, which would make it a little bit impractical on the scale we're going to be building. However, it is just a beautiful design right here. And I love the detail that goes into these walls as they sort of close in on themselves and going upward. Like the doubling up of trapdoors and um, the two different types as well. The windows look really great. A lot of great things going on right here. Now this next one, I mean, do I really need to say <laughs> why this one is here? This is made by Fex, and it kind of speaks for itself, right? I mean, way too big for the project we're going on, but they have gone all out. This is absolutely crazy. Tons of detail in the roof, loads of shapes going on, and just a really amazing looking never tunnel right here, isn't it? So, on to the next one. I think we've got a couple more to go, and then that's it. We've got one from Yogurt Boy right here. And I love this because the bottom bit right here is raised off of the ground. I thought that would look cool. Um, there's no room, though, for the track at the bottom. And in general, it's a really nice tunnel design, actually. I like the hanging glass and iron bars, but especially the different ores in the wall. It kind of makes you feel like you're going through um, a cave or a tunnel or something like that, which is cool. Now, this next one was made by uh, Monkey Pie one And what I liked about this one, I think the choice of materials are pretty cool. Not quite what we're going for. Uh, but the way it sort of opens up on the sides and then closes back in again, that's actually really cool. I like that. I like the use of uh, shape that's going on right there. And also the iron bars at the top look pretty cool. So on to our last one over here now. And uh, <laughs> the sign has sort of been hidden here. This was made by Marvin Zapp F. And uh, what I liked about this is just that it was basically, um, as you can see, <laughs> it's like a, a, a Mario pipe, isn't it? And I like the way it's sort of connected to... Um, the ceiling, which I thought would look really cool if you had, you know, this pipe going along for ages and occasionally it just connects to the ceiling like this. I thought it was really awesome. So we're back down this end, and these are the ones that I felt were going to have a big influence on our final design. So let's have a look at them one by one. This first one right here was made by Pequito, and up the top here he explains with these signs that he was trying to match the theme of the building that we already have, which is something I really wanted to do. And he's used granite and nether brick together, which looks really cool. And actually, surprisingly, the only plot to do so, uh, which I found a little bit strange, but there you go, it's very likely we're going to be using a colour theme like that, so we can match uh, the Wither Farm, of course. Then if we go down over here, we've got another one that's made by Wavy8 Davy. Love the design on this one. This is an all-round uh, great nether tunnel, I think. Uh, but it's the roof and the outside that I really like the look of. I think this with some granite and some nether brick could end up looking um, really cool. So that one's probably going to have a big impact. Also like the uh, leaves on the inside here as well. Though this next one is made by Magini. I like the details on the inside, the arrangements. Um, but it's the banners right here that look really cool. And also the shape on the outside. Again, it's kind of similar to this. And I think it's very likely we're going to have a roof that points up like that. Now this next one was made by SB... SB80046 and uh, I like this one. I wouldn't use exactly the same materials that are going on here but what I like are these big panels where you've got lots of nether bricks, some iron bars, you've got your anvil and your wither skull and I kind of feel like something like that might crop up in our final design. I also like the way you made it turn the corner as well. Now this last one right here was made by the appropriately named Willy Stroker 69 who uh, kind of bombed us on the live stream. Uh, when we did this, which was pretty funny, and it was funny to see. Look at his crazy little melon face. Um, yeah, his design right here it looks really great on the inside and the outside, actually. Um, but the outside is very clean. It looks simple, 
to build and it looks pretty decent as well so I think this kind of form might come into play a little bit with that one over there but that's it we've looked at all of them now and I have to stop babbling and now start building I've got tons of inspiration tons of ideas to check out and uh, and now we're gonna put it all together look at these crazy people what are they doing eh? <laughs> I've been uh, building the design mainly based off the one by I do believe Wavy 8 Davy, and I think we're there. I think I'm happy with this, and it may have a few tweaks here and there, but this is probably going to be be it. One of the tweaks, by the way, uh, the buttons. I think I might remove them. They don't really add too much, and they're going to be a pain. They're just another thing that you got to bring along, and there's tons of materials that are going to go into this, and tons of details um, as well. So. Let's sort of take a step back and take it all in. You can see plenty of spaces for horses to come through the middle of here. And then there's even space to go on the side here to take the quick route down. We've got the minecart rail underneath. And then we've got a reasonable amount of detail in here, I think. We've got the materials that I wanted to use, which is nether brick and granite. We've got our iron bars. We also have some wither skulls occasionally. And uh, up the top here, I feel like the detail is just about right. So let's take a step back, take that all in. And then from the outside, I think it looks pretty cool as well. I think we might be overdoing it here. I might want to reduce um, the amount of those. However, you can sort of see those from the inside. So I'm not sure what's going on with that bit right there. Might make it so it goes all the way across. But otherwise, it looks really good. Then around on the outside here, we've got um, some fence posts right there. We've got more stairs and then an anvil. You know, just using all the things I wanted to. And even at the bottom here, some obsidian, which is part of the build theme and some lamps at the bottom and I think it looks pretty cool and it's going to be a monstrous task to build it on Hermitcraft. So back at the base and now with another massive load of work to do because I've just calculated how many materials we're going to need to build the entire tunnel and I won't throw all of the numbers at you uh, but for example nether brick slabs 2090 that's 32 stacks and where's nether bricks let's have a look 26 stacks of those 31 stacks of nether brick stairs we got our work cutouts for us as well as 60 stacks of clay that we need to dye into different colors I mean we've got a little bit right here we've got enough to get started but <laughs> that's not even 10 stacks right there so we really have our work cut out for us so I guess in the next episode we'll be gathering all of those materials together getting prepared to build this tunnel that's going to be it for me this episode do hope you have enjoyed it as always thank you ever so much for watching if you enjoyed it leave a like on the video it makes a big difference you know all of that by now <laughs> yep so thanks for watching and I'm going to run around like this like a nutter <laughs> alright see you later bye bye